Okay, welcome to my first video on my YouTube series. We're going to be talking about how to create an inventory management system for a company using Django. So inventory management essentially uh, has a bunch of orders coming in, uh, a bunch of supply orders coming in, and uh, keeping track of that so we know when to order some more. Uh, I've seen some uh, pretty primitive examples of this online, so I wanted to go into something that might be a little bit more involved, um, that would be a little bit more helpful than just a basic system. So, um, all right, without further ado, let's get PyCharm booted up. And we are going to create our Django project. Okay, here we are creating a new project. Um, I'm going to be creating it in its own virtual environment, so we don't have to worry about uh, it having a bunch of stuff loaded. It can just have its own stuff loaded. Um, again, this is not uh, a Python tutorial, so if you need uh, information on virtual environments, you might want to look at a different tutorial. So we're just going to do inventory management, or inventory example, why not? Um, Python 3.7, yeah, that's the most advanced one I got. So we're going to create a new virtual environment. Okay, the project's been created. Uh, in PyCharm, we can go to Settings and go to Project Inventory Example, Project Interpreter, and you can see our new virtual environment. We're going to set up Django. So do a search here for Django. Specify the version 3.12. Install. Okay, 3.12. First thing we should put in here is our beautiful requirements.txt. We are going to have in here all of our uh, packages that we're gathering for this. So the first one is Django, which we're installing at 3.1.2 like so. All right, our first file is done. We're going to wait till Django installs and then get back to it. Okay, Django is installed, so we're going to click on the terminal button down here and we're going to type Django admin start project inventory example. Let's see how that does us. All right, success. If we look up here, we can see that we've got the full Django project, and I apologize for making it a underscore instead of a dash, but it's going to help us identify which one is the project and which one is the overarching parent uh, directory. So, okay, we've got our Django project started, but we don't really have any apps in there yet. It's just an empty project. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go into the main folder. We're going to make sure we got manage.py in there. And then the first thing we're going to do is type py is the shortcut for Python 3. It might be different on your computer. It might be Python 3 instead of py. But I recommend trying py as a shortcut, manage py. And we are going to create an app. So let me start app. Or yeah. Okay. So and we're going to call this one inventory backend. Now this is our first application as part of Django. So okay we've got okay we have our inventory uh, backend uh, application which we can now start to modify. So the inventory example uh, folder is going to have all of our main project settings, but the inventory backend is going to have specific details related to our app. The first thing we're going to do is edit the models of our application. The models are going to be, it's basically an abstraction layer for our database. So we're going to create things that are substantiated and uh, uh, persist in our models uh, py folder. So let's think about an inventory system real quick. We've got transactions which are occurring. So let's do trans inventory transaction. 
and that's going to be a model. And we also have inventory um, accounts. So what do I mean by that? Well, if an inventory transaction is going to be a particular on a particular date and a particular time, some kind of transaction goes through where someone either purchases or sells products. Basically, the inventory goes up or goes down based on a purchase from a supplier or a sale to a client. And the inventory account is going to be a general uh, uh, collection of all these transactions and it'll inform us uh, how much of a balance there is in that expected uh, item. So let's say we have four different items. We would have four different inventory accounts and there would be any number of transactions in those inventory accounts. So actually, just by talking it through, we know that the inventory transactions are going to be a part of the inventory account, and it's going to be a many-to-one field, which is also known as a foreign key. So let's start this off by saying account equals models foreign key, and we're going to do an inventory account, <clears throat> and we're going to make this so on delete which is to say if these uh, the inventory account gets deleted, what is going to happen to this inventory transactions? And for this, we're going to do models cascade. And the reason being uh, inventory transaction doesn't really have any value to us unless it's attached to an account. We're only really looking at these transactions in order to understand what kind of balance we have on these accounts because uh, it would take forever to look through all these numbers and come to a conclusion. So there's no reason to have a bunch of inventory transactions around without an inventory account. And models cascade will delete all of those inventory transactions in the case we delete an inventory account. So the next thing we need to put in is a related name. Um, I'm going to put in trims. And what is a related name? Well, if we're referring to our inventory transactions from uh, the related name manager from our inventory account, so that is get gathering all of our inventory transactions um, from our inventory account, we'll have to refer to it somehow. And the related name transactions allows us to refer to it as, uh, let's say there's an inventory account like that. We can refer to our transactions by going like this. So see we have a related name here that we can uh, put into this part and then we can filter, we can do whatever we want with, um, but it will only gather the uh, uh, transactions on that account. Okay, cool. So. We have, uh, let's get some information going first about our transactions. So we have an account that is going to tell us uh, which account these transactions are attached to. We're also going to need a date. Uh, uh, so let's say, that, sorry, let's say this is created on, and this is going to be a date time field. Um, so auto add now, now add is going to tell us, you know, when we create this transaction, this is going to be the date time that is created right then. So we don't need to tell it anything else. It'll simply keep track of when this inventory transaction was created. Okay, great. So in a more complicated example, you might say, uh, uh, you know, let's give this a transaction date so that the uh, inventory is not, uh, so the transaction is not always when you create the transaction, you might be creating the transaction some other time um, for some transactions that have already occurred in the past. So, but for this simple example, we'll just use the date as the created on date. So uh, what is going to happen in an inventory transaction? Well, we're going to have some kind of increase or decrease. So what is that? We're going to put that in as quantity. So we'll put the quantity in as a integer field. We're going to assume that inventory cannot be a fraction of an inventory. So an integer is going to be a whole number rather than a float field, which would give us some kind of decimal. Um, and the integer field, we don't really need to add anything else to this. Uh, that's perfectly fine. Uh, quantity is, is, is pretty self-explanatory. So, okay, so we've got our quantities, our created on date, and that should be good. 
A negative quantity will indicate that it's going down, so it's from a sale, and a positive quantity will indicate that it's going up from a purchase. Now, we're going to first walk through a bad example of what not to do, um, and we're going to morph it into something of what to do. So you might think, what are, how are we going to gather all of these inventory transactions and get a sum? Well, we could create a method called sum on all these inventory transactions. And we can gather all the transactions by taking the self of the inventory account. And again, remember transactions was the related name we gave it. And you can go all. Now, we can start a, uh, a variable to count and collect all these transactions. So for transaction in trans all transactions, we can take sum and add the quantity. All right, great, and return sum x. Awesome. This is looking pretty good, and we can actually give this a little test. Um, I am going to make this all function through the admin panel just to save time, but this is easily buildable in, in, a, in a custom view as well. There's one more thing I do want to add to the inventory account. Let's just call this the uh, name. And that's basically what the item is that we're going to be adding. So let's name this a care field. Max length equals 150, just for good measure. And in the admin panel, we want to have a descriptive name that isn't just inventory account object. So we're going to tell it the string uh, representation of this would be the name. So, you know, we'll just name it after the products. Um, and we'll give this a shot now. I'm going to build the admin panel and you'll see our first working inventory management model. All right, on to the admin.py section, which you can find in our app. So we're going to make, we're going to first register some models. This is a decorator. It allows you to uh, sort of shorthand register some models in the admin panel. And we're going to do that right now. So we're going to bring in some of these models. Inventory back. Oh, just do from models. That'll work. PyCharm doesn't know, but honestly, this would be fine too. Inventory backend models. I don't know why it it uh, it messes up sometimes, but as long as there's an init file, right in there, Python will be able to interpret it as a package. So, but let's just be kind to it and do from the uh, local package. We're going to be bringing in these inventory. Uh, sorry, what are they called? Ooh, inventory account. Yep. Uh, account. I could type it correctly too. Inventory accounts and inventory transactions. Cool. So actually, I think we're just going to have to register the inventory account, but we will actually have to bring in those transactions to create uh, what's known as an inline. So, all right, let's get our panel all set up. We're going to have a class of an inventory account admin models admin. Oops, sorry, admin.modeladmin. All right, and now we can just pass for the time being, but actually what we really want is we want an inventory transaction inline. And if you haven't used inlines before, you'll see why this is kind of cool. Uh, we'll make a tabular inline and we'll make the model equal inventory transaction. Okay, so <clears throat> now instead of just passing, we're gonna put this in as an inline equals like that. And we're also going to add a read only field and we're going to call that one sum. I believe that's what we called it here. Yep. So if we add a read only field to a calculated field in the Django admin, it's going to just do it for us, which is pretty cool. I see I'm coming up on 15 minutes though. So we're going to cut this one short and finish up in the next uh, part of this video. See you in a bit.